Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here this evening. Thank you to those of you here in person and all of you joining us on Facebook Live and Zoom. Uh, we are going to begin with our 10-minute meditation prior to service itself. A little bit of a change that um, I guess the people in charge of Facebook don't like our drone music. They seem to think it's copyrighted, even though we've gone with music that we knew we could be using. And so that's why a couple of times we've been shut down on Facebook. Uh, for those of you who joined uh, last week, you were suddenly kicked off at a certain point. So we will be doing our God is the love that I am chant during the meditation. Uh, that's been available as a free download for years. So uh, if this is something that you really like and want to do at home, you can get it from sacreddays.org. So with that, let's join together for our 10 minutes commuting with that presence using the mantra, God is the love that I am. So I invite you to just turn your attention inward. Close your eyes. And just join in the chant. God is the love that I am. God's the love that I am.
And so we gently bring our awareness back into our surroundings. Just notice the weight of your body and your chair or whatever you are seated on right now. You may want to shrug your shoulders, wiggle your fingers and toes. And as you feel ready, open your eyes. And so once again, Welcome to those of you who are here in person this evening and to all of you who have joined us on Facebook Live and Zoom for our Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science with our wonderful guest speaker, practitioner Suze Webster this evening. And let's open up our service with our opening chant led by the amazing Margaret Owens. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret and Sam. So indeed, God is in this place. Let's turn within to know that at a deeper level. As we join together in prayer, allowing ourselves to become aware of that part of us that every moment just seeks to feel good, to be happy, to feel fulfilled, to be free of anything that feels like suffering or difficulty, and to recognize that as an impulse that is felt everywhere throughout creation, because that is the impulse of God's goodness, God's love, God's infinite intelligence and creativity, that that one is the life energy, life force out of which everything comes into being, and it lives and moves and expresses itself through all that is, including each of us gathered for this service this evening, that we are all moved to come here together, whether we are in person or virtually, to awaken to that truth of God's nature, to experience it more fully, to see it more fully outpictured in our lives. And I know that every part of this service supports that intention of the divine in each of us, that we awaken to that divine presence through that love energy that we share in coming together as a community. I know that we absolutely are moved by the love of all the volunteers who serve us this evening in whatever capacity that we are absolutely uplifted by the music, by God flowing through Margaret and Sam this evening. And I know we hear the perfect message that we've come to hear 
through our beloved practitioner, Suze Webster, that Suze is that vessel through which spirit speaks and our hearts and minds take it in, receive it, and we are touched and inspired and awakened. And so I give thanks for all the blessings I know we receive in this time together. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now and then it's amazing how the earth will shift beneath my feet, leaving me shaking where I stand. Then again, call it crazy if I take a deep breath and release. I feel a higher plan every time I read out or let go I get a new chance to understand that behind the night there is plenty of light everything is alright and I know it let your dreams ignite you've been given a not to hide in the dark, but to show it. There's not enough love or money, contentment, happiness, or time. But I know the problem isn't real Comprehend, do you get it? A making of your own design What you think shows in what you feel Let us claim the true power inside us That darkness can never come Seal. For behind the night there is plenty of light Everything is alright and I know it Let your dreams ignite You've been given a light Not to hide in the dark but to show it
Hi, everybody. How are you tonight? Don't mind me. I'm taking a second here because I've got my spiritual toolbox. Everybody got a toolbox like this? Yep. Y'all have to have one. You know, you got a really good book in there, your journal. Let's see. Oh, I've got my sound bowls because y'all know I do sound bowls. My candles. Oh, sage. Oh, and look, I've even got some incense in here. So, you know, most of us, we have a spiritual toolbox, as I like to call it. But most of us just do this with it. We walk around life and we forget to look inside the toolbox. So part of what I'm talking about tonight is getting stuck and getting out of the stuckness. And I just realized I could take that off. I'm so sorry. Hi, everybody. <sighs> Start over? No. Um, you know, it was really interesting, this, this title, Brain Freeze, Shift-Alt-Delete. And anybody that's a computer person knows that's how you reboot your computer when you get, you know, it just won't do anything anymore. And um, for me, I get that brain freeze every once in a while even mini brain freezes. I walk into another room to go get something and I get there and I forget, why did I walk into this room to get whatever it was I got? And I have to go all the way back to my desk again and as I sit down and as soon as I sit down, I go, oh yeah, that's what I wanted. I call those mini brain freezes and usually that's because I'm too busy doing too many things at one time. So I have to stop and go, okay, what's most important right in this moment? And I hear God saying, Take care of yourself. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I'm going to read something from The Living Science of Mind, which is the book I just showed you. Believing that God is the presence, all the presence there is, I'm learning to feel this presence in everything and in everyone, dwelling on the thought that God is love. I permit my mind to become filled with the consciousness of this love. I permit this love to envelop everything and everyone, bringing with it a sense of peace and joy and certainty. Sounds pretty good. Most of us want that. We want that love in our life. We want that peace and that joy. And yet most of us get so busy or get stuck in a routine of, you know, we wake up at the same time, we brush our teeth, we make the coffee, we feed the animals, we might read something, we go to work, we come home, we feed the dog, we make food for ourselves, we zoom out in the TV land, and then we go to sleep and tomorrow we do the exact same thing. And then we come to church on Wednesday or on Sunday and we leave here and we feel like we've got the world just in our hands and we can do anything, but then we go back to that rut. And so for me, one of the things that I realized was how much of a rut I was in last year when the universe said, stop, everyone stop. I've been trying to get everyone's attention and nobody's been paying attention. And so here we found ourselves being at home. Those of you who had someone with you, you had that whole situation of it's like, wow, I've lived with you for how long? And let's have a conversation, a real conversation. Or those of us who live by ourselves, I found myself talking more to my dog and cat, I must admit. However, I also realized what What's missing? And that still small voice said, hey, you know that tool bag you carry around? You know all those things that you know that you're supposed to be doing? How much of those things are you doing? And so I found that I took this first, especially the first like three months when really everything shut down. For me, I started investigating, okay, how can I grow? I knew that God was telling me it was time to peel another layer of that onion. I found uh, mindvalley.com. They have all kinds of interesting classes. So I signed up for that. 
Then the next thing I knew, I found myself on a dating app. Now, anyone that knows me, I've been single for almost 20 years, and it was a very interesting thing. Why all of a sudden was I going to try to date during the pandemic? <laughs> because I don't do anything easy. I have to put myself out there. And it was interesting because I actually met a couple people, and I went on my ride a motorcycle, for those of you who don't know, and I took a bike ride, and I met a really nice guy, and we had a great conversation, but it was just a nice person. It wasn't anything special. Then I showed up here at church one day. I was working, and I was all dressed up, and Terry says, where are you going? You'd like, look like a million bucks. I said, I have a lunch date. She was like, oh my God, really? I said, yeah, can you believe it? This is when God is saying, sure, get yourself out there. But I did the work. So I said, okay. And then I got stood up. And I was so shocked at my age that someone wouldn't just pick up the phone and say, yeah, I changed my mind, because that's okay. But we've become so conditioned of we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, or we don't want to say this, or we don't, we don't, we don't. In the meantime, God's saying, what is it you want? How do you want to grow? Are you listening to that still small voice in your head? Pardon me. So I found myself on this journey. And I said, OK, God, what is it I must do? How may I better serve? Now, I have a prayer partner. Every day in the morning, we have our phones, there's a little device, we record our prayers and we send our prayer to each other. And that in itself was like something that I just really enjoy and it really feeds me. I have certain people that I talk to every single day. That communication, I think that's what one of the things that has been missing. It's like, how can I better serve but I can't get out in the world? That made it very difficult. So I started getting involved in some things online. And pretty soon, one of the classes I it started investigating was a pagan class. Because I like all kinds of religions. And I thought, this sounds interesting. Well, and the gal said, you know, and I'm also teaching a spiritual class. Hey, let's see what they've got to say. Because I'm open. I'm willing. <coughs> And the next thing I knew, she said, you know more than I do. Can you teach the class? So now I'm teaching this spiritual class. So it's been kind of fun, you know? And we find ways if we listen to that still, small voice. I've changed my routine up. Now, instead of diving at the computer and getting to work at 7 AM, I'm self-employed. I can set my own hours. Now, I get everybody fed, I sit in my chair, and I do an hour and a half of meditation, reading, journaling, and I hear God giving me those messages as I'm writing. So I'm starting to say, oh, yeah, you've been there all along, and I forgot about you there for a minute, but now I'm turning that back around. That's my shift-alt-delete moment. Oh my gosh, there's more, there's more. And they keep telling me, I keep hearing that analogy about peeling the onion, peeling another layer, peeling a... And somebody said, well, how do you peel it faster? I said, I don't want to get to the center yet. I'm not done. There's still so much more to learn, so much more to explore. You know, there's, there's so many people in the world that are looking for spirituality or enlightenment. And one of the things that I realized in this last year is that I'm empowering myself to empower others so that we can all be the best that we can be. So I started doing more sound bowls. It's just one of those things. Even my neighbor came over not too long ago and said, you know, I hear that in your house every once in a while. What in the heck are you doing in there? So I told her, come on in. And now she's like, would you tell me the next time you're going to do that? I'd like to come sit on your sofa, you know? And it's like, for me, if we get the seed planted in even one person to expand their consciousness and 
turn into that space of love and turn into that peaceful, joy-filled place that we all have the opportunity to have, that's that ripple effect that we hear about. You know, we're throwing the rock in the pond and that ripple is going out because they're going to go and they're going to tell somebody and they're going to say, hey, you should check out this book or hey, you should check out this spiritual community or whatever the tool is. So for me, I just know that when I listen to that inner voice, when I say, what is it I am here to do? How may I serve at a higher level? I always get the answers. Now, it's not like God goes, well, this is your list today. However, situations come into my life, opportunities come into my life, and I get to say yes or no to those. And I think that's really an awesome thing that we can say yes or no. So back to the dating for a minute. So there was this person in my life that we kept passing like this for like 40 years. We would run into each other and he was in a relationship or, well, I wasn't obviously if I've been single for 20 years, but, <laughs> but we finally had this point where he came to me because he had been ill and he heard that I was a Reiki master. So we got together and lo and behold, we kind of started dating. And this was a long distance relationship. And there were these red flags. And I was like, oh, no, it's not, it's okay. And God was saying, pay attention. And I was like, I got this, I got this. And then the flags were like, not just like this, they were like, <laughs> are you listening out there? And my best friend is like, are you, are you sure? Because I was talking about like moving out of state and you know all these wonderful things. And I had said to God when this all started last September, please let this be the time, just let's see where it goes. And I was, so, I was so adamant about, I wanted to see where this was going, why were we, continuing to run into each other. I knew this had to be something. And then just after Christmas, I woke up and I was like, how many red flags do I really need? And God was like, finally. <laughs> Gee, many Christmas, I've been beating you over the head with a woman. And I really had to sit with myself. And I realized, you know what? I'm worth more than this. And I realized that God was saying, no, that wasn't really for you to do, but you were so insistent that I finally said, okay, if you want to really go down this road, I'll be here when you're done and we can pick up the pieces. And what I realized was when I let that relationship go, the first thing I did was turn within and really look at what my part in it was. And where was I needing to grow? Because we all have situations in our lives where we say, oh, I won't do that again. And then pretty soon you're doing that again, but all the characters are just different people, but it's the same exact experience. And even though I hadn't dated in 20 years, I was like, well, dang, haven't I learned anything? And I realized, yeah, I have, because I turned around and I looked at my part. And I took responsibility for my part. And I got myself centered again. And I was like, OK, God, I'm paying attention. So I'd like to read something else from Living the Science of Mind, Direction and Intention. Nothing is more definite than mental work. Mental work is not daydreaming or fantastic wishing. It is a deliberate act of the mind, a conscious moving action of thought in a certain definite direction. And we should think of it from this viewpoint. 
the conscious mind chooses what it wishes the subjective law to act upon. It gives direction to power, which is infinite compared to its own conscious capacity. We have to make the choice for a better life. We have to know that we are never separate that God is always right here with us. We have to do the work. I can't say, hey, Maddie, could you do all the work and then I'll reap all the benefits? I'm just going to say I'll pray for you on that. <laughs> <clears throat> so I don't know about any of you, but this past year has been a big brain freeze, and that shift-alt-delete has been very prominent in my life. I'm using my toolbox every single day. I'm trying to be of service wherever I can. And sometimes we feel like, oh, I don't even know what to do or that's not enough. Being kind to just another person, looking in that person's eyes and seeing God reflecting back to you, that is being of service. So it can be the little things that make us be a better person and help the world be a better place. So in that, let us pray. Let us know right in this very moment that each and every one of us is open to that divine experience, knowing that God is calling to us. The beloved is saying, yes, you are precious. You are divine. You are worthy. We know that in this very moment we are saying, yes, God, yes, I am ready for that shift to higher and better, more peace, more love, more joy. And we share that love and that joy and that kindness with each and every person that we come into contact. We know that those that are hurting are surrounded in the love and light of God. We know that those that are dealing with health issues are surrounded in the love and the light of God. We know that each person has something to offer this amazing life. And so in this moment, I just invite you to bring into your mind's eye a situation, a person, something that you see can use God's love. Mm. And so together we say, I accept these truths for myself in all beings everywhere. We bless all churches, ashrams, all religions. We bless all people walking all lives. For we know that at the core we are all God. And we give great thanks for this. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. with my
Amen. <laughs> and amen to that wonderful message. Thank you so much, Suze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. For those of you who are here in person, we have two boxes in the foyer at the back as you exit this evening where you can drop off your donations. Those of you who are watching us uh, virtually, um, you should be seeing, well, there are several ways. One, you can call the church right after service, 818-762-7566, uh, and we'll be here for about 15 minutes. We can take your donations over the phone via credit or debit card. You can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you to our donation page to make your donations a uh, one-time donation, or you can set up recurring donations. And you can also text the word GIVE to area code 818-457-3419. And again, however you are supporting us, just thank you so much for your gifts. So with that, let's hold our intention for the blessings that we are sharing with others, hold our gifts to our hearts, and say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Once again, thank you, Margaret and Sam. So as we bring our service to a close, I um, want to say thank you first to everyone who's been of service this evening. So here in the sanctuary, as always, Adam, thank you, thank you for the support, lights, and sound. <laughs> uh, let's see, is Greg here tonight? I didn't, OK, but thank you, Luana, for being here to greet us and usher us in here. To uh, our media team, sanctuary media team, as always, I know you were really <laughs> having to pull things together there uh, just before the service. Thank you, thank you. To Doreen Remo, to Brenda Jordan, to Nikki Sparra, who's back there, to Blair Thompson. Let's see, music. Yay, once again, to our wonderful Margaret. <laughs> Margaret Owens and Sam, thank you so much. And you know, you can get Margaret's music at margaretowens.com. Again, I just want to thank all of you who make it easy. <laughs> Your name, margaretowens.com. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Oh, um, OK, I'll thank myself. And <laughs> for 
dragging myself out of retirement into <laughs> such a pleasure. And again, Suze, thank you for the wonderful, wonderful message. And to all of you here and virtually. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, yes, it was nice hearing people sing in the sanctuary, isn't it? Thank you. So again, a reminder for donations. So over the phone uh, for 30 minutes after service, they should be popping up the phone number right now, 818-762-7566, online, nhcrs.org forward slash give, or texting give to 818-457-3419. And we're just also offering a reminder that if you join, um, if you're a member of Amazon, but you go to Amazon uh, Smile, um, Amazon Smile and select North Hollywood Church as your charity, every time you make a purchase, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but uh, donations are made to the church. So it's um, just a lovely way to be able to support us without any extra effort. <laughs> So thank you for those of you who have been doing that and those who will consider doing it going forward. Prayer with a Practitioner is available via Zoom after service. And uh, if anyone here in the sanctuary wants prayer after service, uh, I know Madeline's here that could pray with you. Uh, but if um, you know we don't have enough people here, you can also sign up and we'll have a practitioner call and pray with you afterwards. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you here? Oh, emailing your prayer requests. Uh, you can email them to prayer at nhcrs.org, or you can drop off a prayer request in the uh, prayer request boxes. You can also call into the church number, and option four allows you to leave a voicemail message with any prayer requests that you have. And if you're like going through your week and all of a sudden you want an, you know, something uplifting, you want to hear some prayer, just call into the church and uh, option three is dial a prayer and it will give you a pre-recorded reading and uh, prayer from a practitioner. So next Wednesday, August 4th, same time, same place, meditation, 6.50 p.m., service at seven, and we're asking you to join us for our special guest speaker next week is Joanne O'Brien, the practitioner who you know from Tizé Service. Uh, she will be giving our message, or, and her, her topic is the grace of resilience. So maybe she needs to hear about all those red flags and what you went through. <laughs> that would be a wonderful, wonderful subject. Women's group uh, meeting in person and on Zoom this Sunday at 11.15 in the Youth Church. So uh, those who are attending in person can uh, join, again, 11.15 after our Sunday service. And um, also on Zoom, all women are welcome. We'll be having a celebration of life service for our beloved congregant, Taryn McEwen. Uh, some of you may remember Taryn from some of the performances she did here at the church. Uh, it'll be on Saturday, August 14th at 4 p.m. here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. And the Zoom link will be made available on our website and all are welcome to join. Women, Food, and God Workshop with Reverend Nadine Weathersby. That will begin on Saturday, August 21st from 10 a.m. till 12.30, lunch is included. Uh, you can sign up on our website for this wonderful workshop based on the book with the same name, um, and that's by Janine Roth. And the cost for the workshop is $30, and the book is available on Amazon. The Youth Church will be reopening on August 15th, so we're really, really excited to welcome our youth ages 3 through 18 back to church beginning that Sunday, August 15th. Uh, again, we're just doing the 945 service, so it'll be for that uh, one service. And parents are welcome um, to bring children who are under 3 years old. Uh, they can go in the mommy, daddy, and me room 
with their parents. <laughs> you don't get to just drop them off there and <laughs> come into the sanctuary. No, 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 no. <laughs> but we are making that available so more of you can uh, come back as you feel comfortable to do so. So our in-person attendance continues Sundays and Wednesdays here in the sanctuary. Uh, we hope to see more of you coming back as you feel comfortable. And we are continuing to wear masks in the sanctuary to make uh, as many people feel comfortable coming back in person. Zoom virtual patio before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services. So uh, you can join 20 minutes before on Zoom to just connect with congregants uh, like we did on the patio if you're not coming back yet in person and also hang out afterwards. Our men's group uh, is meeting every Sunday from 11 to 11.30. All men are welcome. And I believe we've gone back to doing that on Zoom at this point. Um, I guess uh, no one was really coming in person. So that will be, stay, stay uh, tuned to whether or not we're, we're gonna be changing that. And our Zoom meditation continues every Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 a.m. All the information for all of that is on the website, nhcrs.org. Um, with that, just going to say thank you again for joining us this evening. And no, actually, one more thing. I'm going to take a little liberty. We haven't done this in ages. Um, but our last Wednesday of the month, before we were all coming back, was the day when we would celebrate birthdays and have birthday cake. So there isn't birthday cake out on the patio, but I do know there's at least one person in here, Kira James, it's her birthday this evening, <laughs> today. <laughs> and if anyone else had a birthday this month, please stand and let's, Margaret, can you lead us in? <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kira. Happy birthday to you. So there, I'm glad you came in person, Kira James. <laughs> so with that, thank you again for being with us, and I'll invite Suze back up to give us our benediction. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me this evening. So as we just give thanks for this beautiful evening together with the wonderful Margaret and Sam with music, I'm hoping that we know God at a deeper level every single day of every moment. I know that we go home, we sleep well, and that we are open and receptive to all of the gifts that are there for us to take. Let us know that the rest of this week is just unfolding for the highest and best for each and every one of us. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. Thank you, thank you for all that is for all that is forthcoming, but especially for this day, for it is the presence of the divine. And so it is. Amen. Blessed